Hey, John here. I wanted to just show everybody, make sure we're in sync on something. After the last video, I noticed a minor typo, fixed it. We'll see that in a second. And I added another feature to the boot flash code. Shout out to my Patreons. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much for supporting my channel and all my subscribers and viewers. Thank you all. Thank you very much. So I am on the main branch. I got some noise in here, but that's okay for what we're doing right now. It doesn't matter. Let's look at, uh, let's do this. Git log and firmware. Uh, I'm on the main branch. This is tagged as 2023.03.17.1, which is the version tag for the last video. And basically the same for this one. And the issue is the last video we upgraded the boot flash so that we can use banks 14 and 15 during the boot process, which it did not do previously. And in doing so, it allows us to use smaller SRAMs if you can't buy the bigger ones. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch that last video. There's also this comment over here. Set D E H L A and C parameters. Rather terse comment. The purpose of that comment is that what I want to do as soon as possible is add a way to tell the BIOS which partition it was booted from and where that partition is on the SD card so that someday we can get more uh, flexible, more dynamic, configurable, user parameterizable booting type uh, stuff going on. Like I want to boot from partition three instead of partition one, that kind of thing. All right. Now this is not mandatory, but I wanted to get it in place so that I can segue and evolve the BIOS and take advantage of this additional information now that I can make it available. Now let's look at uh, what? Let's look at a diff. This is from February, so this is before I made any of these changes. Get diff minus R, this older version, for the files in the current directory, which is the boot directory here, which has the firmware.asm file that we looked at last time. So what did change? It looks like I put a comment in the readme file. So rather than simply saying, don't a Pi do this, I point out that there's a bootloader that loads 16K into this range and so on. Okay, a little bit more detail in there. I updated the dates because I made some mods this year. And I put some doc in here. This is the new stuff, all right? So this is basically the entire doc of what has changed with respect to the parameterization of uh, the information I want to pass into the BIOS. Okay, so let's look and see what's going on here. The accumulator in the current version of the Flash, since day one, this has been true. The accumulator is set to zero before the BIOS entry point, the load base entry point that we've talked about at great length in the past, is entered from the bootloader. And what's further is we know, because it's been hard-coded in the BIOS since day one as well, that the first partition is the one that's been booted and that it must start in SD block number 800 because that 800 is hard-coded inside the BIOS. Now, moving forward, it would be nice if the first partition could be somewhere other than exactly right here. And maybe someday it would be nice to be able to boot off of the second partition or something like that. So what I've decided to do, it's a pretty simple mod, we'll look at it in a second, is add another option down here. So the newer version of the boot flash, instead of having a zero in the accumulator when it goes to the load base entry point, it'll have a one. And this first release that we're looking at today will be 100% backward compatible with this one up here because I'm not going to change the BIOS yet. Right now, the BIOS doesn't even check this. It assumes this, and that's the end of the question. It's hard-coded. It won't work in any way unless this is true today. As we move forward, it'd be nice to update all that.
So the first step is let's make sure this is parameterized. When it enters, it will be set to 800, but we'll have it all formally handed off. That way, later on, we can look at different uh, organizations of the SD card and react accordingly. Okay, so what is the new version going to do? Instead of booting the SD card from the first partition, it'll boot from the indicated partition that will be, the indication will be in register C. And because of the weird um, enumeration of how the partitions work, uh, they consider one to be the first partition. Why? I don't know. It should be zero, uh, but we'll stick with that annoying um standard so that uh, everybody doesn't get confused too much. Uh, so we will tell the BIOS which partition was booted, and we will also hand over to the BIOS a 32-bit value that holds the first SD card block number that we loaded from. So instead of assuming it's 800, it can get the actual value out of the DE and HL pairs. DE holding the high 16 bits of the 32-bit address and the HL register holding the low 16 bits of that 32-bit. Uh, it's not an address. It's the sector number, right? The block number, the SD block number, okay? So how are we going to do this? Well, first thing we want to do is create a formal way to specify what version of the boot flash image this is going to be and we're going to start with number one this is well, the second version will be number one because the first one is zero right uh what else has changed in this file you saw me change this comment in the last video we're not booting into bank zero and 15 we're going to boot into 14 and 15 so you can use smaller uh srams if you can't get the bigger ones and this is the sum total of all the rest of the changes right here it used to be, and you can go back and watch the other video on how all the boot flash and stuff work. I'm not going to start over and re-explain all that here. Go back and read it if you can't recall. By my recollection, what happens is this sets up everything and gets it all ready to go, and then it calls uh, read blocks. And when it calls read blocks, right before this call, and we've seen this in the SD card driver in the uh, in the uh, library and in the BIOS and everything else, it does the same sort of a thing. It pushes two 16-bit values into the stack before it calls this that have the 32-bit block number that it wants to start reading from, and it puts it up here in the stack. It calls read blocks, and remember the way this diff works is the red lines are deleted and these plus lines have been added. So the original code was call read blocks followed by pop DE. This was not there. And then a second pop DE to basically just throw it away. This was not there. I then say or the accumulator with itself because when this function returns, if there was a zero in the accumulator, it was successful. Otherwise, it was not successful. So, by oring the accumulator with itself, I would get zero if the accumulator had a zero in it, and this will set the ALU flag to indicate that fact. This line of code was not there. I then say if the Z flag in the ALU is set, go to the load base, boot up the BIOS, and we're off to the races. Okay? If the Z flag was not set. It falls through to an I puts that gripes and says, you know, bad things happened. And the SD card could not be read. It's the original version. What does the new version do? We delete this. And instead of popping DE twice to throw away the 32-bit value, we pop HL to get the least significant 16 bits of that 32-bit SD block number. Then we pop the DE to get the most significant 30, uh, 16 bits of the SD card block number. This is what's going to uh, set those registers up to pass them into the BIOS. We just forcibly put a 1 into the C register because the rest of this startup code is hard-coded to boot out of the first partition. And that takes care of that parameter sent off to the BIOS. We leave this alone. I observe, probably should have added a comment over here. Sometimes I do. 
but I assume that we all know that load instructions do not alter the ALU flags in any way. So it otherwise is the same, right? Or the accumulator with itself will set the ALU flags. This will change the value in the accumulator after that fact because we need to make sure it has the right version number before we go into the BIOS. This wasn't here before, and it simply left the zero in the accumulator when the BIOS was entered at the load base, all right? This one will set the flags, put a one into the accumulator, and then ask, is the Z flag set from up here? And you see me do this from time to time. Be careful. Do not get confused when you see – a lot of people do this. Once you get pretty good at writing assembler, you keep in mind when the ALU flags are set and when they're not, and you might have to set them and then do this sort of thing and then use the flags down here. The reason we do this, by the way, because otherwise you'd have to have multiple jumps and it makes the code even worse to understand and has more crap going on, runs more slowly. It's annoying. That's why we do this, okay? <laughs> so uh, now when it uh, enters in load base, there'll be a one in the accumulator. There will be a one for the time being in the C register and these register pairs will have the SD block number. So what else happened since the last time? You saw me edit this line, and I put an OR C0, which is the thing I did wrong. Now I have a equate. This is actually just copied out of what the BIOS does. I set it to E instead of C, and then in here I uh, do so the same way I did it in the BIOS by taking this E and shifting it left four bits and ORing it into the rest of this stuff that I used to initialize the uh, GPIO. Uh, port that holds the memory bank value. Which before, it just had no bits for the memory uh, bank number, which meant it we used bank zero. This one will use bank E. All right? That's all there is to it. Now, I'll also go on to say that I did verify this. I did test it. I wrote a little bootable program that uh, simply wakes up. I hacked it into the beginning of a test version of the BIOS and printed out the registers and saw the right values were in there. We don't need to go into all that. That's easy enough to do. Leave it as a task for the viewer. Uh, you simply put each one of the registers in the accumulator and call the hex dump A routine that you've seen me do a thousand times by now. And uh, you can try that yourself if you really want to give it a test. All right. So I just wanted everybody to know what this is doing because I didn't mention it last time. I, really, I want you to understand where we're going. And most importantly, I want you to understand it now because there is a shortage of these flash chips and people are offering to uh, sell or program these EEPROMs. And if you buy one or acquire one that's been pre-programmed and you don't have an, uh, any way to change it yourself, um, you want to make sure you got this version of the code, okay? Um, that way you'll be uh, uh, compatible basically forever. Uh, as long as you're using... I mean, honestly, you could use the Flash version from a year ago and it'll still work because the old ones always had a zero in the accumulator because that line of code wasn't there. When the BIOS wakes up, if we ever write code that uses these new features, and we probably will sooner than later, um, we will first check to see if the accumulator is equal to zero before we assume the H, L, D, E, and Z registers have these other parameters in there. And if A is zero, we'll just assume that the thing was booted in the old way, current way, off of uh, block 800. That way, we'll stay compatible. Uh, but if you do this, you'll get bank 14. Is the really This is the huge value right now. And st uh, in addition to this other stuff, a bank 14, if you're having trouble finding a, a, you know, a flash, you may also be having trouble finding a 512KS RAM. So maybe the 128K is something you'd want to do. But otherwise, if you have the right SRAM and you have a boot flash that works, it should continue to work because we'll continue to put checking for the accumulator value when the code wakes up at load base and we're backward compatible. So this is intended to be a long-term backward compatible design decision. And this is the first leap that I want to make so that uh, I know there's others out there, is my point, that have done some fancy work with Flash, 
uh, uh, boots and stuff, and they got like ROM monitors going in there, and they do have the ability to poke around with the SD card and look at different things and stuff like that. I think that um, if you go in the Discord, or even if you go into the uh, Retro Repo, you look around. I think I have a link to some of this stuff in here. Kenny has some SPI. I should add a link to his stuff up here. If you click on uh, Repos, there's 11. There's a lot of stuff going on in here, right? There, uh, This right here, the Retro Monitor. That's what I'm thinking, yeah? KR Synthworks here. So this is a boot monitor that you can load into the Z80 Retro that Kenny wrote, and it allows you to use, you know, SPI and I2C squared and stuff like that using a board that he created, and uh, you can interact with it and, and, and tinker around with memory, and this is, like, super awesome old-school kind of stuff. I think I mentioned this in another video, but my point is what I'd like to see happen at some point is to integrate this in with also being able to boot up the retro out of an alternate partition. Now, he might actually have a way to boot up the... There it is. If you hit B, I'll bet his... I have yet to try this, but I suspect that this will boot up the BIOS out of the first partition. He even has special commands that change the RAM banks, and you can use this to test your retro if you really wanted to. So uh, it's kind of neat stuff. And what I would like to do is create, you know, a superset of this and, you know, do the usual kind of thing that we're all familiar with, I'll allow you to have an extensive boot ROM monitor, and maybe it'll time out in, in a couple of seconds if you don't press a key or whatever and then automatically boot in the CPM. But if you do hit a key, you can change the partition or something like that. Uh, and uh, we can move forward with that. So this has been in the back of my mind for a while. This is the kind of thing I'd like to do. In order to do it, we need to be able to uh, boot up our BIOS and allow that to be a little bit more configurable in order to be more flexible someday. All right? So that's the whole idea. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.